There we are. Hi, peeps. Okay, so we are doing Adventurous League, a set of ongoing official campaigns for Dungeons and Dragons using the 5th edition rule set. These are standardized to support play at game stores, conventions, and online communities like the Daddy Warbucks community, which we are a part of. Oh, I should, I have commands for this too. Okay. Uh, tonight's adventure is part of the Storm King's Thunder storyline, and it is entitled The Black Road. Um, let's go ahead. We've still got one player that, that's kind of trying to get settled here. Um, I don't want them to miss out on the other character adventures, so I'm going to start with story time here and, and sort of do the setting and we will catch them up uh, when they're ready. Okay? Sound good? Sounds great. Okay. Anorak is a magical desert in northern Faerun, holding the remnants of the once powerful Netherese Empire. For generations, Anorak has encroached relentlessly on border nations, burying them beneath the sands. This mighty desert is only passable via the Black Road, a trade route created by the Zentarim along a line of oases from Lork in the west to the ruins of Tethumar in the east. A small Zentarim garrison is tasked with patrolling and defending these oases, though years of bitter fighting with the Bedin who make the desert their home have resulted in only tenuous control. Caravans wishing to travel between the Sword Coast and the Moon Sea really have only two options, the Black Road or the much longer route around the mountains south of the desert. This makes many opportunities for profit for mighty adventurers willing to brave the dangers of the desert. In fact, adventurers like you you have an opportunity to escort a shipment from the Verfell outpost in the western desert to Parnast. And it's likely to be exciting with recent rumors of organized attacks by goblins and orcs and who knows what all. Should be fun. So, as you approach Actually, we don't need to approach it. Let me give you guys a minute to actually read the invitation. You are needed to make a small delivery and you will be paid handsomely for the task subject to the Adventures League rules. Um, meet Azam, the caravaneer in the oasis of Verithal on the Black Road in the Western Anorak Desert. My servant, Sing, will meet you there. Should this task go well, there will be more work and more treasure for you. This is the first step on a much larger journey. So, as you are approaching the outpost, um, oops, I forgot to grab tokens for the introductions. Let me do that. Okay, let's introduce our characters. Uh, we don't have Cassie yet, but we'll go ahead. We'll start with Haru. Okay. Um, Haru is a, a very short half-elf man with a rose and dragon tattoos upon his chest. Um, he is he used to be really angry in his past. He's kind of worked through it a bit, so he's a level one barbarian and a level one paladin currently. And with him are three entertainers. Or sorry, not entertainers. His entourage. <laughs> I wish they were entertainers. That'd be a lot better. Retainers. <laughs> there we Retainers. go. Retainers. There we go. Yeah. Um, there is a uh, red dragonborn named St. George. There is a yellow tiefling named Charles II. And there's one who he doesn't remember, but it's a human named Sam. And those are his they carry his stuff and do what he wants. And then they run away if there's, like, combat or, like, anything. Yep. That's it. Okay. Tilarna. 
Yes, uh, Talana, Barash, Milvo, Isandelia, Leas, Tamarina, Devol, Neomo, Sayan, Nail, Exadesia, or just Talana, is uh, uh, from the Feywild. Deep Feywild, actually. If you know where that name is from, uh, pops to you. Awesome. Uh, and she is on loan to the Order of the Gauntlet. Uh, she came here to the Primaterial Plane to find an escaped Necromancer. Who is a bit extra, but she hasn't seen any kinds of signs, so she's traveling all over doing adventures, anything that looks like there might be trouble. She's trying to find her quarry. So far, she is very confused how big this place actually is. Someone has shown her a map of Toll, and she is um, scared. But not as much to show it. Um, otherwise, today she has a bit more glittery hair than usual. Because today she is actually a core. It's actually a... Uh, cool. That's yeah, what I, I don't know uh, what to pronounce. Plethora that. of strange. I don't either. Plethora of strange yeah. skin colors. Ah, okay. She's a very weird Latin. Excellent. And she likes Law and Order, uh, which is not very favorable of her, which is mostly a plane of uh, more chaotic energies. Uh, so she's kind of a knight there, an investigator with the power to slice up and arrest people. What fun. It comes we, can, we can see why she's not in the Feywild right now. <laughs> okay, let's go to Castus. Yes, Castus, just mechanically speaking, is a level three Monster Slayer Ranger. Uh, a lot of it was replaced using Tasha's Cauldron of Everything's for alternate rules uh, for this. As far as Castus as an individual and as a person, Castus is kind of an unknown nonsense individual. Um, He's somewhat serious in nature, but um, he he's he's out to kind of set the 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 wrongs uh, of the world back to the rights, and he's willing to kind of break a few rules to do it because he's been uh, a little bit of a folk hero where he's kind of goes and helps out everywhere he can, and he always tries to find opportunities to kind of really punish the bad guys in that and. And with that, he always tries to be creative. As far as his final style, he is um, a crossbow uh, fighter. Like he's he likes big crossbows and and likes to use it to kind of his advantage to kind of hit targets and make sure they get uh, taken out in practically one shot. This is going to be a good group to have on the lawless black road. <laughs> okay. Yes. Lazy wind. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my character's name is Lazy Wind. Uh, what you see is what you get. A uh, tabaxi character wearing a hood and dark clothing. As you can guess uh, what the profession is, um, he is a fourth level soul knife. So you're going to stand next to our law and order ones, right? As I pickpocket them, yes. Uh -huh. um, that is a 20 on the slide of hand roll. Let's see oh! what, um, <laughs> what, what is... Nobody uh, has a eight, passive that high. <laughs> what does 8 pain have in his pockets? Um, Haru, Haru? Yeah. Uh, you can find a torch. Uh, do you <laughs> want me to read? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, that is my torch now. <laughs> All right, you have a torch. Can that... Cassius uh, try to roll a perception, see if he catches it? Um, oh, oh, no, that's passive. It'd be passive, yeah. and your passive isn't that high, no? Uh, passive is 17, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Oh, passive is 70. Passive has gone up. I didn't catch that. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, that's from uh, the Ranger Tasha's College of Everything from mm -hmm. uh, Dash Explorer. Mm -hmm. And actually okay. good ranger feature. We love it. Yeah. Let's go ahead to Sersha. Sersha Orbinder. Uh, I'm a uh, forge cleric of uh, Moradin. Uh, I hail from uh, Hundlestone up in the uh, spine of the world. Uh, I'm here because I hear uh, some caravans need uh, transport and goods. That's, that's what I'm all about. Uh, I myself am a crafter, uh, quite renowned, if, if I'd like to say so, toot my own horn. 
Uh, well, I guess there's not much else. Uh, happy to be adventuring with you. Okay. Uh, if you can't tell, uh, Shursa is a, uh, what variety of dwarf did I make this guy? He's a mountain dwarf. Uh, a little bit fighter, a little bit cleric. Good for a porch cleric. Um, we'll go to Tomori. I'm using I'm using your prior character sheet here for Introductions Castle. So if you want to introduce Tomori for us, while we get your sheet straightened out. Okay. Uh, quickly, Tomori. He was a human that underwent through a lot of transmutation experimentation. Now he got turned into a lizard folk and is now over here trying to. Seek treasure and maybe find a way to cure of his transformations. Could be handy. Okay. So. Excuse <coughs> me. There is nothing like. Yeah. Well, well, we'll make do here. There's nothing like the desert to make people feel small and insignificant. Uh, in every direction, huge dunes roll across the landscape, and even an even bigger sky looms above. The oasis of Earthel is a motley collection of sun-bleached tents in the vast Anorak Desert. Through various means, it has been arranged that you would meet a Zamla caravanier in a large uh, Kalimshan-styled tent that passes for a tavern. A pair of tieflings who seem to be unaffected by the heat I approaching visitors warily. The dim interior of the tent is a relief from bright light and wind, though what's as hot here as anywhere else. Maybe a little hotter since it's a little stuffy in there. But the gentle sounds of a stringed instrument fill the air, and the people inside are hunched over food, drink, and conversation. A dragon born with rust-colored scales greets you and guides you to a private table. And there are a few other adventures here. Um, quick message to Mike on Twitch. I'm. I, thank you for the posture check. I might do some stretching, or I might nod a little different to you on camera. So, but um, thank you for looking out for me. Okay, so. Uh, any initial impressions as you are looking around in here? <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna have my uh, my I love people your prepare me. Yeah, they're just gonna start making a nice place for me to sit. They're gonna like dust the chair. They're gonna like mm -hmm. make sure that their silver and stuff's ready. Find out what the pricing. Do it like a budget expense thing, and I'm just gonna wait for them to finish. Okay. Anyone else as you get settled in? Uh, Shursha is going to immediately try to uh, locate our uh, contact for Azam. He wants to see if he can manage to uh, strike any sort of bargaining deals to get his merchandise uh, sold and traded across the Black Route as well. Okay. Looking around, you know, you're looking to see if there's anyone who's paying a special attention to your group. And as the dragonborn is bringing water and dates, olives, and bread for the table, you see a lean half-elven man with a long, craggy face and the dark skin and hair that shows his Rishemi ancestry um, come up to your table. He has a very impressive mustache, and he's clad in practical desert gear. Um, he has draped around his shoulders a golden scaled pseudo dragon and it sort of stirs and blinks with milky irises and sort of sniffs the air and gives the man a nod before shifting its wings and settling back down to snooze and he comes and sits down at your table are you the people i called for my name is or that was called for me i am azam oh hello azam oh I'm not sure if you called for us, but we're here. Excellent, excellent. And this is Singh, my patron. He gestures to the snoozing dragon as if this were a perfectly normal thing. And and Singh is most pleased that you have come. 
and we do have business to discuss. Hopefully you are ready for a long journey. Um, and we would like you to deliver a statue to Parnast. May, may I join statue. you here? May I sit, may I sit with you? Uh, yes, uh, Saint Char or Charles II, uh, make a t make a spot for him at our table. Oh, excellent, excellent, thank you. My, quite fancy. Yes. So, um, I didn't engage you directly myself. I understand you were engaged, though. I'd like to know a little bit more about your your strengths. There have been. Um, there have been quite a few caravans that have not completed the journey to Parnas. There's stories of goblins on the road. I'm hoping that you can serve as insurance against that. So what's, what skills do you bring that, that will help me get this caravan through? Lawbreakers? Hmm? Well, we need to take care of them then. Well, there's always bandits along trade routes. They're they're little parasites. Well, particularly the Black Road, yes, is quite notorious, and it's been it's been I've heard it's been worse recently, particularly between here and Parnast. But um, I do have anything. some. I do have a few other goods in addition to the statue that are of value to to me and to Parnast, of course. And I'm hoping that, it, it, but it, the, the caravan itself is only four four wagons. Um, and I see there are six of you, so that should be, uh, good, assuming that you have, um, do you have particularly good defensive skills, fighting skills, experience with goblins? Cassis kind of remarks, uh, when it comes to laying up traps, I have a pretty fair eye, and I'm pretty familiar and can speak, uh, Goblin, Orcish, Draconic, and Common. Um, I'm a bit of a long read, so I can keep an eye out for from a distance um, to kind of see what's out there. Make sure we don't get too surprised. Okay, okay, good, good. I have experiences with any kind of evil doer. With any Unless kind of... The law, I'll take him down. Okay, excellent, excellent. Have you heard any necromancers? or hints of those on the Black Road? Not recently, no. I have not heard of any necromancers, um, mostly goblins and orcs. Do we need to keep a watch for necromancers? Is this news that I should add to? No. I was just... I was just thinking a, a Black Road would be a place a necromancer would be, but apparently it doesn't mean what I thought it means. No matter. Okay. We have evil doers to find. So what are the other wagons carrying? I didn't know the desert was a big source of statues. Well, so Parnast has, has had all sorts of troubles. They, you know, there was the business with the cult of the dragon, and now there's something involving giants. I don't know the particulars. I just trade from the Moon Sea to Parnast and back. Um... But the shrine there in Parnast, um, the Shrine of Axes, um, has commissioned a statue from some artisans here in the Narek Desert in this area. Um, the statue's not small at all, and it's not light. I don't know if it's magical or not, but I don't really care. I'm just paid to transport the thing. Uh, it takes up about a whole, a whole one of the wagons by itself on it. Um, some statue of a deity of some sort? Well, bruiser and bar fights. Uh, yes, that might be good in a guard. Now, I, I, I don't want you doing any sort of fighting around the camp at night. I mean, this is going to take us probably a week to get there. You, do I need to worry about that? Oh, no, no. I, I strictly separate business and, and pleasure. Worry not. Oh, okay. Oh, and some of you have worked together before. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, so I think I, I think then that, that this will be amenable to me. Does the deal seem amenable to you? Oh, I, I still haven't heard what on the, what's on the other wagons. 
Oh, the other wagons, right. Uh, let's see. This time we have a load of weapons and we have a load of medicinal herbs along with, uh, you know, the, the food and the, the um, provisions for the camels and, and all on the trip. So that makes, let's see, statue, weapons, food, water, uh, and medicinal herbs. Yes. Yes, that's all that water they have from the desert. No, no, no. This is water we are transporting for us. We have to carry it because there is no water in the desert. Yes. Well, and we've just sense. refilled. And we've we've, we've and just refilled from the oasis here. Hmm? And the weapons and medicinal herbs, I assume, are legal in this area. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not like there's much law here in the desert, but. Um, they're destined for Parnast, for the various healers in Parnast, yes. That's for medicinal herbs. Okay, no quotation Big! marks. <laughs> uh, don't breathe that fire too near to my perishable herbs, please. Uh, Cassius is going to quickly ask, uh, what about the weapons themselves? Is there anything uh, uh, useful that may be able to help us in case? Well, um, there are various swords and crossbows and some bows, and I think there's some whole arms in there. And it, I mean, it, but it, this this is cargo for sale. I don't wish to have it all damaged. I mean, you you seem to be well provisioned yourselves with with your own weapons, I presume. Cast kind of remarks. Uh, I am. It's just good to be uh, aware of whatever potential resources in case uh, we're ready for the worst case scenario. Uh, and he kind of remarks and adds and says, um, do you happen to have any enemies, anyone that we should consider and keep an eye out in terms of uh, potential threats that would target your cargo? That's not enough. Not, not specific that I know of. Um, I don't think it's widely known that we're carrying the, the statue if anyone has it out for Parnast. Um, I don't have any personal enemies, just the normal um, dangers along the road. I mean, there's the usual, you know, sinkholes and sandstorms and heat waves and nomads and feral creatures and I, I blue dragons. And I mean, that's, that's all just, you know, the normal flora and fauna of the desert. Well, Would you like, like to... Would you like to see our path? We've got, uh, let me see here. We have, here's the, the map I have. And he, pull, he pulls out a map and lays it out on the table for you. Uh, we've already come from Zentil Keep uh, along the Black Road here to Verthil, where we're picking up the, the statue. So we're just now doing the last leg of the journey here from Verthil and heading over to Parnast as he gestures to various places on the, the map. Is there anything on the map that uh, Cassis can make heads or tails of to figure out where are the places they would most likely kind of be uh, most likely to be hit with an ambush or something along the way? Um, give me a survival check. And I know you've had at least one other adventure along the Black Road, because you did that at my table. Ten. Um, with a ten, basically, the whole road is going to be dangerous. You might know of a couple of choke points where the way is difficult, but the Black Road is, is kind of the only path through. So... You've been, let's see, your last, uh, the, the adventure you had with me was in the Grey Peak Mountains, so you're kind of aware of the dangers there. Yeah, Cass is just kind of sharing information, just kind of, he's gathered within the area and in his travels to the rest of the party. Um, marking, uh, if you see, uh, like, if you see and come across any cracks, be wary, some creatures tend to come out from it. That can be rather uh, dangerous if you're not careful. The Crypt of the Death Giants is just around the corner. It probably is, yeah. We can go there instead. 
I haven't I mean, prepped that, but sure, if that. you want, if, if you want to, um, don't take my statue there, though. I, I'd rather my stat, the statue here, go to Parnast. I'm not paid for it to go to some crypt. <laughs> That's not the mission we agreed on. Let's do that. Let's do the Death Giants, or let's do the mission we agreed on. Do the mission we agreed on. <laughs> okay. Good. 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 <clears throat> uh, I think I have the text for the death for the crypt of the death chance, but I do not have it prepped and I haven't read it yet. Oh, that could be fun. Yeah. Can I cast this? Uh, can I agree to this? Yes. Uh, well, right yeah. now, and if anyone wants to prepare anything for the next day, um, he's going to recommend, he's gonna just going to head out and like, turn in for the day and to kind of get ready for the next day to ship out this cargo. Uh, crypt. Uh, I don't see this. Um, yes, that would be lovely. Let's see here. Would you, do you want to inspect the, the, um, the statue? Oh, I should probably state, um, I would like to leave in about four hours. I'm anxious to get on the road as soon as we can. And um, this will be a good time of day for traveling. Um, so I, I do suggest that if you don't have survive, desert survival gear, that you go ahead and uh, purchase that here at the outpost um, to protect against the heat. How much does that cost? You would have to talk to one of the provisioners here. I don't think it's terribly expensive, but uh, any right. of you who wish to see the, the caravan and the, the wagons and the statues, I shall go ahead and bring that up for you too. So here we have statue description and desert clothing, which if you talk to a clothier or to a provisioner is, um, Four gold pieces, half that for if you are a Zentarum in good standing. And what it contains. What does the desert gear involve? Um, so I did it think. pop up for you? I thought I hit. No, she, she's asking. <laughs> oh, uh, well, um, well, you want as as I am dressed, you know, with the loops layer layers of the light cloth. The layers help protect you from the sand. And the light color protects, helps protect you from the sun. Um, a wooden cloth mask that, that gives you space to breathe so it doesn't just, you know, suffocate you, but, but protects your breathing from the sand. And a, a canister of pitch to rub under the eyes to uh, help protect your eyes against the glare. I'll take the cloth mask and the canister of pitch, but I'll not wear these clothes. I'm wearing traditional robes that all knights wear, and I refuse to take them off. Okay. Uh, so for you, you can record the purchase at half the price if you're only taking the mask and the pitch. I want to stop my character from being idiotic. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, play your character. If your character would be idiotic, your character would be idiotic. So the statue is, is laying, uh, you know, in the wagon. You can see there are the four wagons there that are pretty well ready to go. Um, yeah, we've got uh, each wagon is uh, has two bad-tempered camels harnessed to the front. And the camels are sort of chewing and look at you with the, give you each of you sort of the stink eye. And if you get too close, they spit at you. So, yeah. Fun stuff. Cass is going to kind of quickly ins inspect the, um, the, the front uh, wagon and mm -hmm. trying to make sure that, that uh, everything's kind of secure and stable. And I guess he will go to the, I guess, the camels of that front mm -hmm. car and just kind of give them some food to kind of give them, make sure they're calm and, and well-fed and ready okay. to go. Okay. 
Azam seems to know his stuff. So the wagons are, you know, well tied down, are in good shape for, um, in good shape for the the trip. Um, you can give me animal handling if you want to try and make friends with the camels and and all. And yes, as one of our watchers says, yes, it's redundant. They've never heard of a good-tempered camel. Ah, yes. Well, okay. So you do just fine. The camels are camels, but are are. This is a good day for their temperament. And what has lazy wind stolen this time? <laughs> Slide of hand on a camel? Uh, you get some dust and fleas? Okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Are there any other purchases or any other things? Vaxi, are you still fleas? <laughs> There's that. Yeah. Okay. Sand fleas uh, are nasty, though. Sand fleas are nasty. Anything, any other provisions you wish to purchase here at the outpost or anything? Anybody? Well, I'll put, purchase some water skins, I think. Some okay. additional ones. All right, so water skins. Uh, let's see. Equipment. So they are available here for uh, water skins. Water, water, water skins. Here we go. So um, they're available here for three silver pieces each, but you it does include um, filling them at the oasis. All right. I'll, I'll I'll buy ten, I guess. Ten water skins. Okay. Yep, that's about as much as I can carry. Yeah. Cactus kind of remarks that he's proficient with land vehicles, um, so he's kind of asks if uh, if each of us will be in charge of of driving each cart, if anything. So like, if he needs someone, uh, he can volunteer to drive the first cart. To kind of keep an eye out for anything that's out there. Well, I do have drivers, and I drive one of the, the wagons myself. Um, and I we do we, I do have drivers, um, one for each. So I would prefer to have you focused on any dangers around. Although if something does go awry, knowing that that there is someone else who can also uh, spell and, and drive, that is good to know. Maybe you people have some useful skills after all. We, we shall see, I'm sure. Cass is just going to ignore that kind of and just kind of move on to the first <laughs> card and just get ready to, to kind of get this going. Okay. Oh, are we ready to go? No, we have more like proficient it. with bland vehicles. Excellent. This is a really good party to be... Oh, good heavens, you're all... Okay. This is a very good party to have with um, to have with a caravan. Okay, so travel in the Anarak Desert is slow, hot, and full of blistering sun. There are no clouds, no promise of water anywhere. Um, the normal pattern for it that is on um, takes is he likes moving well before sunrise when the, the moon's full glory makes the dunes look like mountains of diamonds and the sunrise is a gorgeous spill of pink and gold across the horizon but then the baking sun is soon pounding on everyone like a hammer in the forge which actually makes our forge cleric feel right at home. Uh, vultures occasionally soar overhead hoping that something has died in the heat. Um, so we do take, so we do take, um, uh, two shifts every day where we travel from the pre-dawn until noon, and then we sleep in, from noon until late afternoon, and then we travel from late afternoon until after dinner time, and we sleep from dinner time until pre-dawn. So let's, um, 
uh, whatever don't want to be the city human. So let's talk about how we want to do the, the watches at night. Let's actually uh, I'm gonna move everybody over to this is a bit of overkill. But over to the camp as to how we want to do did I move you guys? Yeah, I did move you guys. Okay, so Lazy Wind. So we're going to do first watch of Lazy Wind. And this will be, you know, uh, we'll probably do the same pattern for each of the watches, you know, the, the noonday watch and the evening watch. And things are generally pretty quiet in the watches. Um, you know, whenever we stop, the drivers and Azam will bed down for sleep to leave you all to do your duty as guards. Um, the nighttime desert is bitterly cold and dry. There's camel spiders and sand scorpions and snakes and large-eared hopping night mice come out at night to casually murder each other and try to get into the tents too while they're at it. Um, there are, you know, during the day, stuff doesn't really move. It's but the the shimmering heat is the, basically the only thing moving as you as you try to pay attention um, on that. All right, so we have the first watch is Lazy Wind and Talarna, and who's on second wind, second watch? Sure, sure, we'll take the second watch. Okay. Uh, Tamora can take the second watch. Okay, so we'll have first watch is these folks here, second watch is these folks here. Um, Haro can be third. Okay, and there's probably, since we're doing it in two breaks, um, Cassius, do you want to join Haru on the third watch? Yeah, uh, yes, you uh, said you will. Yeah, yeah Cassius will join Haru on the third watch. Do we actually get along last time today? <laughs> do you get what? Uh, do we actually get a long rest on the way? Yeah, you'll get long rests. Um, over the course of the two of them, you'll get long rests, yeah. Well, you know, it's on the next day that um, Tanana looks a bit different. She uh, oh. looks less glittery, more... Mm. Bluish, greenish. And she has golden skin. Excellent. That'll be fun. So. You said goldish skin this time? Yep. Don't stand too close to, to Haru's entourage there. I have lost something. Okay. So on the fourth night, and this will be on the night. Oh, I know what I was looking for. Oh, darn. Okay. Castus. Let's see. Castus and Haru are on the watch. Castus, out of the corner of your eye, you see a flicker of movement that resolves into furtive small humanoid sh shapes sneaking towards the wagons. Castus is going to quietly kind of like uh, nudge to Haru. I'm assuming this is the third watch. Uh, just it to kind of point watch. seeing. Yes, yeah. Haru will kind of quietly nudge Haru to kind of and bring. Uh, Haru's attention to those lights and what he's seeing he says, uh, and it says, uh, we got company and kind of very quietly tries to uh, notify the rest of the party while making his way to a very high position place. Okay. Well, they're very so, close. You might want to do that loudly. Um, okay. <laughs> who is who's this lady? Who's this beautiful lady who just showed up? Showed up? That's the driver who's oh. sleeping in the the driver of that wagon who's sleeping there 
Oh. Okay, so now that you know you're looking around, and Haru, you know you're looking around, you see two of those small um, creatures uh, creeping up on you, and we shall go to initiative. Open awoken? Or. Hmm? Have we all been awoken or are we surprised? Well, go ahead. Uh, the Those who are asleep will be surprised, but those who are awake at the moment. Uh, what, what happens to those who trance? What happens to those with, say the last word again, please? Trance. The other thing, where they don't sleep, but instead. Oh, trance. Remain semi conscious. I will allow that you will have heard... Oh, Castus, how subtly did you alert Haru? Uh, Castus, like, I'm guessing as soon as he spotted him, he, like, um, he nudged Haru, pointing where they're at, and was getting ready to kind of position himself to, to where he would have, like, higher ground to better see. And, and like, anyone that he could see along the way, he would, uh, like... Quietly, just nudge him to kind of sh like, like with his okay. hands without saying anything. Okay. So I will let you. If Cassus is moving around and nudging everything, I will allow you to be ready as they actually come up. All right. All right. So we are going to start. Lazy wind. You got. And let me move these. Let me move these guys a little. Uh, let me change which tool I have active. I'll move these guys a little further away because they are approaching. You had you had somebody with a very high passive perception. Pesky. Okay, passive but perception. but I was asleep. Castus so was I, I not asleep. To... No, Castus, it was during your watch. It was during Castus's watch and Castus has a high passive perception. So Castus alerted everybody else. Oh, okay. Um, well, in um... Make sure my partner, uh, I give him a, a kick, and then I will just go ahead and take a shot at this one with Psychic Blades. Okay. Uh, look oh, right there. good lord. Okay. One down. Um, one down. Bonus action. Hide. Okay, give me your spell. Okay. Uh, poor roll, but I don't know. Versus a goblin, it might work. Might work. Talarna, you have well, been awakened. Happening. You have been awakened. Did you poke your head out? Yeah. She will invoke the blessing of Ala Sentinel, the god of starlight and twilight. By which I mean Shadow Blade. Oh, I love Shadow Blade. And since, you know, this is kind of dark out. It is dark out. You you have your advantage, yes. I will also do Psychic Blade attacks. Oh, good lord. Okay. I mean... Good uh, the, lord. It's supposed to be advantage, not disadvantage. Uh, 25. I think You're Azam 25. is going to be. I, I think Azam is going to be very pleased with this group of guards. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your your twenty five there is a crit, friend. You'll want to roll some more dice. Oh no, I think he's dead already. It's it's, it, it's dead to. already. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's perma dead. That's more than twice its hit points. So it's twenty three damage. Three times its hit points. You have you have killed this thing back to his ancestors. Ouch. Ouch, yeah, yeah. Oh, I should add a couple more goblins just for the fun of it. Okay. Is that all everything for your turn, Talarna? That was bonus yeah, action, that was action and movement. movement. Yeah. Bonus action. Yep. All right, so the goblins. The goblins are if they were smart, they would flee. How smart are they? Not very. Okay, so 
they these goblins are scrawny and they look kind of uh desperate and yeah they are going to attack at the wagons themselves so they're going to bypass try and bypass you and rush up and try and um get into the wagons and this one has got a snarling warg that is um He'll be a little bit smart. He's going to come over. To, he's going to run over to that wagon, and that will be their turn. Tamori. Okay. Well, Tamori's asleep, so don't know if well, all of us have been aroused by what's going on so far. Yeah. Uh, yes, because um, Castus went around and woke people up. Okay. Wasn't too sure how that would go. Okay. So when Tamori wakes up, he notices one of the goblins approaching. And from his spot, he'll just fire a fireball right at that goblin. If it hits for eight. I should have doubled the number of, of those. Okay, anything else? He gets up to and, well, tries to make a small himself a is there any cover from where he is right now? I assume you. You can. Let's see where. I there imagine he's Tomari. probably inside. Oh, there's Tomari the in there. Yeah. So inside the wagon, there's some cover. You can also there. You get partial cover under the wagon. You can climb under the wagon, over the wagon, around the wagon, behind the wagon. The wagons are about the only cover. Okay. I imagine he's probably inside just to make sure. And then I'll probably try to hide behind some barrel or two, and that'll okay. be his turn. Okay. Castus, you are probably outside yeah. of your wagon, having alerted everybody. Yeah, Castus is going to use his bonus action to do Slayer's Prey on the uh, on that goblin's mount, what looks to be like the leader. Okay, where you are on the outside of it, yeah, you can do that. Slayer's Prey. Um, okay, so you have to target it with a weapon attack. Okay? Yeah, it just takes an extra 1d6 damage um, okay. when I hit it. Okay. And Cassis will try to uh, use its main action to, to attack. Uh, the goblin's mount, because uh, it's uh, marked with Slayer's Prey uh, with his crossbow. Okay. Give me your attack. That will hit. And followed up by just doing the 1D. Uh -huh. Okay, that's a and good solid his good solid hit deep in the shoulder. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and start and follow it up with the um, favorite foe. Feet, which is based of oh, that was just crossbow, <laughs> uh, which is wrong. Basically, it's like Hunter's Mark uh, updated from Tasha's. Uh, so right. it's, uh, yeah, uh, an extra one whole damage. A damage is damage. Okay. So yeah, so yeah, 18 damage for it. Okay. Anything else, Castus? Uh, no, Castus would just tell the, the driver to just stay behind him um, as he tries to kind of give him cover. Okay. That's it. Sersha. Uh, you know, Sersha's uh, you know, asleep and he he had, you know, his his armor off and his his arms to the side. He's just rested against the wheel of the wagon when he stirred awake and he just you, you, quick panic hop to his feet and just see the the goblin riding up on the warg and just starts 
shout in the door like, oh, who do you think you're coming in here and trying to, trying to steal the wire? You, you, you think you're a big man up in your mount? And he's, he's just, just angry, shouting him, stirred right up from sleep. Um, he's going to cast a guiding bolt on the mount. On the mount, okay. Oof. Uh, could I possibly retroactively use inspiration to get an advantage? You could. Since I have not announced whether that was a pass or a fit, yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, plus five. A 19? That will hit. Okay, six, 16 radiant. All right, and I'm going to give the Goblin Boss a deck save as he tumbles off and he does just fine, so he lands on his feet as his mount falls. Cool. Shersha's going to step over and action surge for another action. Okay. And he's going to attempt to grab the goblin by his scrawny little throat and inflict wounds. A soft 20. Ooh! And you can see as the the purple and black tendrils and uh, of wisps and all come out and these sores and pustules and all erupt from its face and its throat and as it just sort of its skin peels away and it um uh, is dies in your hand fantastic uh he, he's gonna whirl around you know Ugh. rubbing literal sand and also sleep you know dust out of his eyes like all right where where is there there is yeah i'm uh, i'm gonna get you and he's just gonna move back next to his equipment and his turn yeah haru they've left a little bit for you to do <laughs> my question is can i get to them um do i need to do the camels co just like cost 10 feet of movement to move through or um you can move between them. They don't take. You can move between them without um, costing. Awesome, movement. awesome. Because I was like, I'll see you guys next round when I finally move up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Haro's just gonna take off running towards this goblin, and then he's gonna draw his long sword and be like, "What do you think you're doing? Attacking our band this late at night?" He whacks him with his long sword, non lethally. Oh no, he missed. Oh no. Oh, and you hit the wagon wheel instead of the goblin as it sort of ducked underneath uh, underneath, and is trying to scrabble out of your way. Yeah. Be like, what do you think you're doing? You can just come over here in the middle of the night and attack a group of people traveling and that's my turn. Okay. Hey! Two of them have survived a whole turn. <laughs> Lazy wind! I'm sure you'll take care of this for us. Let's move up. And hit him with psychic blades. Okay. He does have partial cover from you. Oh. Oh, yeah, but it's not enough. Hold on a second. Stink attack's coming. Uh, you don't <laughs> he did not even didn't see it coming didn't hear it coming just fell over and died twice over yeah okay um then i hide that's my turn okay go ahead and give me yourself good talarna move here and well make a new shadow blade as a bonus action then try this thing again on this poor goblin. All right. Uh, you have advantage, so that is enough. Okay. We have a bunch of dead goblins. And we are out of initiative. These are ex-goblins. So as the quiet falls and the, as the clattering you can still hear the sounds of, of people breathing um, with the quickened adrenaline and, and all. And uh, as they've gone still, you have the bloody wrecks of these goblins lying in the dust at your feet. It's 
So now what you gonna do? Um. Did did I'll Haru will just be like? Did anyone know why they came here, or are they just common raiders? Oh, well, maybe find some evidence on their bodies. I'll we'll start searching yes. the bodies. I'll send Saint George to help you. Okay. So, are you gathering all the dead bodies together, or are you just going to look at all of them where they are? Or... Yeah. Okay. So these folk are these folk are 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 scrawny, starving, look like they're not in very good shape. It isn't actually that surprising that they fell so easily. Uh, looking through their belongings and in their pockets, um, one of them has a a tooth from an unknown beast in its pocket. Another one has a pipe that looks like one of those bubble things and it looks like it's set up to blow soap bubbles rather than uh, that there's a multicolored stone disc in one of them there's a, a few a handful of silver coins in the others um it's mostly just trinkets these people look like they have not eaten for a while one of them, though, however, this one over here, closest to the boss, he actually has kind of a box with him that, that yeah, it's a, a wooden box. A wooden mm. box. Uh, I'll smolder to his. Box. Does okay, it smell so um, no, it does not smell necromatic. It looks like, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, um, inside of a messenger bag and all, and it fits snugly in the messenger bag. And as you, oh, well, are you going to open it up? Mm, sure. <clears throat> That's the worst thing can be in there. Let's see. Okay, so as you carefully open it up, there's a, this. You you get the stench first since you've been smelling at it. It's like ew, and you look at it, and it's filled with these curved strips of pale, foul-smelling wood. The smallest of them is kind of a crescent, about ten inches across, um, and some are a little bit larger than that. Well, it's, yeah, not, uh, it is. it's not a half-eaten rat, so it's better than that. Well, it's bad, but not like necromancy. It is, it's bad, but it's not necromancy. You could give me a nature check if you wanted to figure out what this probably is. It's, and uh, even, with a, even with a 9 and an 11, as you're looking at it, you vaguely remember that Azam had said something about giant troubles. And, it's, you know, these kind of look like nail clippings. Giant-sized nail clippings. Great. And whoever's checking out the body of the, the boss, the body of the boss, it had... Um, I thought he had something in his pockets. No, nope, apparently he didn't have something in his pockets. Okay, no. Nope. I mean, the thing, he's the one who had the rock in his pockets then. Yes, giant. Cast is going to try to look at, like, tracks to see if there's any clues, that, uh, if there was a, uh, anything to kind of get an idea if this was the entire like raiding group where uh, there was potentially more raider give groups. A, give me a survival check. 11. Um, and what is your, what is your vision source right now? You have dark vision? 
No, uh, cast is a dragonborn, so no dark vision. So just okay. like uh, would be a torch. So you're using a torch. Okay, so following back, you can tell that they came um, from the west of you, from which is the direction that you're heading. Um, it looks a short distance away. It looks like that's where they, they had come together and then they split up there. You can see the tracks. It, and it looks like the tracks came from the west. You follow them a little ways. It doesn't look like there were any others branching off. So as and what you see with an eleven, what you see is consistent with what you uh, had attack you. So it doesn't. You don't think there's anything more out there. Uh, yeah, Cass kind of relays this information to the party and kind of looks at them see like. Um... Uh, to come in an idea and ask, uh, so how do you all want to proceed? I, the same we've been doing, I suppose. Azam, Azam comes up and says, and he looks over the bodies, the corpses, and nods. Well, I think you do have some skills in amongst you. Very, very good. Not a single lot. Everyone is all okay now? And looks around and checks in, and, and the other drivers are peeking out of their wagons. And Excellent, excellent. We came through that one just fine. Very, very good. Well, justice has been served. These won't be, ter these won't be raiding any other caravans. You've Taken them out quite decisively. Okay. The rest of the night, uh, probably, well, there have been reports. I've been hearing from other caravans of, of goblin and orc attacks, and there have been reports of caravans that have not made it to their destinations, and obviously we aren't quite sure what happened to them. Uh, don't know if this lot was responsible for those, but it has been a problem lately. Thus, we hire people like you. The way they're looking, uh, I doubt they killed a whole caravan crew and ate the rest they left over. It's, it's possible maybe this was just one group of a larger goblin band. Possible. Well, I expect they would share food. Hmm. I don't think you've ever seen a uh, a group of goblins. They're they're more first come first serve. Uh, I have actually fought some goblins in a cave, and as well as a weirdly small giant. It was yes. a strange day. It was a strange day. <laughs> I w was he just a normal man? No, he was a giant. He got bigger after he died. It was a strange. Listen, day. it was a strange day. <laughs> Strange indeed. Right. <laughs> Strange indeed. Well, I think that that um, we are in good hands, and I shall continue to leave the watch to you. And I think that that and he looks over at the drivers. We can we can go back and finish our rest, knowing that we are safe with you. And they had to go back to sleep and finish up the night. Hmm. Now, this was the third watch, so it's close to the end of, of the watch, and there's not going to be a lot more sleep left. Um, anyone want to do anything different or specific in light of this? Let's see, this nah. was the fourth day out. All right. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my servants take part of the watch. <laughs> Are they particularly observant? Well, Azam doesn't see this because nope. he's already gone back to sleep, so it's like, okay. All right. Extra particular. sets of extra sets of eyes, though. Extra yeah. sets of eyes. All right. So the next day, as... Um, the next day, till Lana has silver hair and rainbow silver eyes. Silver hair and rainbow eyes. Ooh, very cool. And one of the drivers does kind of the with for the the wagon that you're doing kind of leans over and says, "Is this a normal thing with your people?" He 
he kind of yeah, of whispers it and kind of looks a little uncertain. You know, he doesn't want to give offense, but. I'm just older than most. Okay. Most of the lanterns change with the season. I channel the old spirits. Ah, okay. It's very Im impressive. Distinctive. Quite distinctive. Yes. Okay. Has other implications. So, I'll say it's not the next day. It's two days later. So you will have had a long rest. As you are um, going along, and this will be about halfway through the morning one. And since we're heading west, the sun is rising up behind you and it's, it's getting, you know, it's about halfway up and it's starting to really get uncomfortable. And you notice up ahead of you, kind of a black spot of movement on the horizon that gets larger and larger as as you travel towards it and azam who's driving the the first wagon is kind of looking at it and he looks a little bit worried that might be another caravan likely well it's too far, hard to tell who it is what do you think? Should we should we camp with them safety in numbers? Should we try to avoid them? What do you think? It would be beneficial to exchange information. So we'll stop and chat with them then. Okay. And if they attack us, we'll just do what we do best. Cass is going to be like hanging back and kind of be more wary uh, and just keep an eye out for the party. Okay. Also, a black caravan might be a necromancer, and, you know, she kind of flares up with anger as she mentioned this. There might be a necromancer. Okay. They tend to like black. They do. Well, and it's mostly just shadowing. So we keep going on along the road then, and over the next hour or so, as you come up, you can see that it looks like a, a company of mercenaries. They do have what looks like a supply wagon with them, but most of them are, are mounted on horses. And they're all wearing, um, I mean, they're all wearing what looks sort of uniform-ish adapted to the desert. Um, any of you who are familiar with the Zentarum, it looks like a company of Zentarum mercenaries. It looks like there are are about six of them on there. And as they come riding up, uh, Azam slows the wagon to a halt. Elana looks like she wants to set fire to the wagon with just using her eyes. <laughs> oh. uh, what, what, fortunately, what Azam's what, what, not looking at you. <laughs> you there. Do you be alive or dead? Beg your pardon? Are we alive or dead? It's a simple question. You do not smell of undead, but those spots no, can be hidden. They don't smell of undead. Um... Wait, Talana, I got this. I got this for you. And I'm going to divine sense. Are any of them undead? None of them are undead. <laughs> I'll give you a thumbs they up. Are it looks like they're all... alive. They're all perfectly normal people of various species. There's a half orc a and a... Okay. I'll never find my quarry this way. And this nobody knows that Lazy Wind is here. Excellent. She's whipping back and forth. Nobody knows. So, no so I'm finds. sort of hails them. Any, any news of the road? And they pull up and the leader um, who is, you know, looks like sort of a grizzled veteran um, comes up and says, well, uh, and he's sort of a balding, blonde human. There's a nice big scar on his face and all. 
and comes up and then says, well, uh, there might be some news. What, what kinds of things do you want to know? I'm not here to oh. talk to myself, so Azam's not going to talk to him. <laughs> well, uh, Haro will look at him and say, well, we've, uh, no, there are some goblin bands roaming around attacking. Uh, have, have they become more frequent? Okay, Castus, give me a, uh, an insight check. 18. Well, they, they have been, uh, the past few months... We've been trying to buy them off or turn them against each other, but, but, uh, I mean, I don't know how effective it is. I mean, you know, goblins, you stamp some out and there's always more goblins. Have you run into any goblins? With an 18, um, it looks like these guys are tired and bored. They're not looking for trouble. They're they're looking a little discouraged and dispirited, like they've got a hard job and they aren't sure if they're doing any good. With that information in mind, Cassis kind of just remarks and says that yes, we encountered a pack of goblins um, a little while back, um, and basically um, looks to their I guess their boss, their the person who hired them, their employer. Um, to see, to kind of get a look at the map, is to kind of look and see and, and kind of share where in the map they encountered it. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of share that information. And as long as and, you're doing that, and, and while you're doing that, you know, he kind of looks over the map with you and he kind of points to one place that, that kind of where the road kind of goes through a canyon. And he says, um, there's been a toll station set up about here and it's about another day away um right on the edge of the desert um that has been set up by some hobgoblins they're decently armed and armored and it's a pretty defensible position um we probably should have fought them but there were more of them than us so we just paid the toll they were trying to charge and and went through and as uh, hearing this as on behind you is going toll paying the toll what toll well, I mean, it was a 15 gold piece toll, which is 15 gold pieces. Well, I mean, if they set it up in their territory or no man's land, they're not really in jurisdiction of any city laws. So, I, you know, every man for himself on a toll road, I suppose. This is, never, uh, this is an is... outrage. It has never been a toll road before. Cass just kind of looks at the map to see if there's an alternate route. Says, uh, well, we got a couple of options. I can help you try to find an alternate route. Or, 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 because you said your biggest priority is making sure that the cargo is safe. If we go in with the intention of not paying the toll, we run the risk of a fight and bring more danger to the cargo. So, well, we got a I'm making a profit. Yes, I want to get there safely, but I also want to profit from my cargo. Well, I'll turn to Haru. Will turn to one of his uh, entourage who he keeps forgetting the name of. And he'll look <laughs> at Sam and be like, "Uh, you um, do we have a budget for fifteen gold?" And then she'll <laughs> shake, she'll shake her head, and he'll be like, "Oh man, this is not looking good." I heard there was no law in this desert, so there should be no tolls. Well, the Zentarim are supposed to be guarding this and making the road safe, and Azam scowls at the... the and it's like, who shrugs and says, what do you want? There were, I don't know, a dozen of them, and there's six of us. They were pretty well set up with traps and well-armed and defensible position. I mean, we'll pass word on, and maybe a larger... Patrol can come out and take care of them. Do you want to sit here and wait a week for that? And his own humps. I certainly do not. We aren't provisioned to just stand a week out here in the middle of the desert. Uh, Cass is going to try to offer to look at the map to see if they can find an alternate route they can take. Well, so looking at it, the 
the land around there is pretty rough. <coughs> Um, you might be able to, I mean, it's not a road, it'd be kind of rough and really slow going if you try and go around it, although that is an option that you can try and do. Uh, yeah, I, like, uh, Cassis kind of asked the other group and says, um, uh, how trustworthy do these people seem to be? You said you paid the toll, um, and they let you pass. Correct. And he shrugs and nods. They let us pass. Uh, or, sorry, it's the chief. Yeah, yeah. Um, we paid fifteen gold, and I mean that was a day ago, so we're here. Uh, Cassis kind of remarks and says, "Like," uh, and kind of looks to their um, their employer and says, uh, "I'll be willing to pay the fifteen gold in exchange for you owe me a favor." What kind of favor? He says, uh, I'm out. Um, uh, in my line of work, it's good to have weapons. So it's kind of good to have someone to get in contact if I ever need uh, a weapon in particular. Uh, I will not pay money to highwaymen and robbers. We should visit this toll station. Leave the caravan away so we don't risk it. And end this. The eyes flare up again. Okay, so I, I've i heard one thing for going... Uh, uh, actually, Azam can do this. So you say we should go around if you're looking on the map for a route. You say we should pay the toll. And you say we should, what, clear out the bugbears? You're my guards. I'll defer to you. Which way are we going to be safe? Well, if... We might not clear them out immediately, but we at least should take a look. Uh, to to avoid uh, consuming more than than we brought, uh, we could at least pay pay a visit to the toll. Maybe we can haggle them a lower price. Okay, so you guys want to at least travel up and take a look at the toll? Yeah. And at the bug Look at the toll booth. All right, let's. As Ka as the group start making his way, cast his ass and says, "So who's good at uh, who's good with the negotiating skill?" Oh, uh, I'm I, I, uh, I, I Haru. I, <laughs> I seem to have lost one of your entourage, Haru. That's okay. Sam is the first to run away. So, <laughs> all right. So as you travel up. You come upon the, you can see up there, there's a front view over onto the right and the sort of flat view on the left. You come up and you see, uh, let's see, I have, an, I have an official description here, I'm sure. Although that picture is pretty good. Okay, you've been watching the mountains come into view for days, but today they're close enough for the caravan to head up into the far more forgiving environment. You see trees on the map. Uh, actually. Before you get there. <laughs> that's all just outside of the desert. Before you get there, as you are traveling to take a look at the, um, to take a look at the, this toll booth, you see... Um, as you're starting up from the after the midday stop, you notice a, a, a faint respite from the oppressive heat. It's like all of a sudden you can take a breath because it's slightly cooler. And a slight breeze ruffles through the tassels on the camel's tack and the driver's robes. And it's, and it's quite a relief in the, the still hot air. It's like, oh gosh, you can, you know, get some of the sweat off a little bit. But someone points to the south and you see a cloud on the horizon. You haven't seen cloud, any clouds at all in days. And this cloud is moving directly towards you and fast. As you look closer at it, 
you see blocky shapes on top of the clouds. And as it comes closer and closer, it resolves into buildings and towers and pennants snap in the wind of its passage. The cloud isn't the only thing coming toward you. Behind that cloud is a speedy, whirling storm of sand and dust kicked up from the desert. Quickly, you are deep in black shadow for a moment as the speeding cloud of palace passes over you. There are the sounds of horns from above, and the cloud castle turns slightly northeast with a delicate, ponderous turn towards the Grey Peak Mountains. And as it turns, the wall of roiling clouds uh, and dust continues in its wake, and you have moments to protect yourselves in the caravan from the oncoming sandstorm before it consumes you, and we will use the this. So, you have time, I'll get rid of the gar goblin vines here. You have time to scramble quickly. Each of you, Azam jumps down and he grabs at a pair of the, the um, camels. Each of you has time to try to protect either a pair of camels or a wagon, oops, I missed one, or a wagon's cargo or a driver. And so let me know what you are going to do and try and protect these people. And you have moments as this sandstorm is coming upon you. Cass is going to try to protect that driver. Okay. Take, um, let me actually, uh, okay. So Cass is, I'll put a driver next to you. Oops, I don't want to stretch you guys. I don't want to move you. Uh, Azam's going to take care of a pair of, of camels. Okay. Uh, Talana's going to take care of the water wagon. The water wagon that also has the medicinal herbs? Okay, and what are you going to do to help protect the wagon? Uh, you will uh, secure it down so it can't you know, flip over, be ripped apart. Or anything. Okay. Uh, Shursha is going to secure the statue wagon as that was their main objective, and that's uh, he 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 can resupply the town with whatever weapons they lose. He's not so good at like large scale wood carvings. Okay. Um. And so, what are you going to try and do to save the statue? Um. Are you going to? Move it. So the sand coming along, or you can make the survival tip to find out what you know about sandstorms. Um, I'm going to assume the wagons have some sort of coverings that, that they can, mm -hmm. can close up to keep the sand out. So he's, he's going to make sure the flaps are closed, and then he's going to attempt to uh, stake the cart down as best as he can. Okay. Yes, he's going to offer him some... Um, some pittance and some rope. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, make for a survival check for me. Let's see how well you're doing this. Could this be at advantage with the, the pythons and rope? Yes. Thank you. A 14. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, you're at the statue one. Okay. So we know what Castus is doing and Church is doing. Who else is doing stuff? Uh, you said we can help a driver, camels, or... A wagon. A mm -hmm. wagon. Uh, Haru is going to help uh, camels. Um, all these people are just going to climb inside one of the wagons and not participate. But uh, Okay. So I don't think mechanically they can. Um, He will try... He has a, a bedroll. He's going to mm -hmm. attempt to, like, cover up the camel's heads and kind of protect them from this uh, storm with the bedroll. Okay. Pro probably have a tent, but I can't find it, so I'm going to go with bedroll. That works. Talarna? Oh, like I said, the water and medicinal herbs wagon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, you told me. Tamori. I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm wondering, can you try... I'm wondering if you could try to do both at the same time. I guess you'll just go up to the driver for one of the wagons, like, because he's already by the food. He'll just, hmm, I wonder if you can. He'll just try to 
urge the driver to get into the middle of the wagon, grab a bedroll and try to put some, try to find like some good cover in the wagon while, well, adding okay. some weight on the wagon at the same time. Okay. And he tries least... to persuade everyone to get into okay. the wagon to add weight. Okay. And it casts us, you've got this one. And Lazy Wit, what are you doing? Being lazy. Okay, which entails Ooh. what in this case? <laughs> I am going to hang out in the um, the the water medicinal herbs shipment uh, wagon and be lazy. Okay. All right. So in moments, as you guys rush to try and and um, uh, to try and protect things. Searing air and stinging sand overwhelms the caravan, sand whipping through the air, tearing and ripping at exposed skin and rending the hems and sleeves of clothes to tatters. Somewhere in the blinding storm, you hear a man scream and the unearthly terrifying noise of a camel facing its end. Somewhere out in the hell of flying sand, you hear the ripping of the heavy canvas wagon covers under the onslaught. The wind howls louder until it drowns out all other noise and the storm threatens to overwhelm you. I need everyone to give me a constitution saving throw. Um, if you have desert survival garb, you get advantage. If you are wearing heavy armor, you have disadvantage. If you have both, you get, they cancel out and you give a straight roll. <coughs> Is my filter mask enough or do I need the clothing as well? Um, yours is enough because you had, you had, um, that and your own garb, um, did the layers and your own robe did the layers. So that'll work. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Anybody have disadvantage? Is anyone wearing heavy armor? I am, but I got an 18 as a flat roll. Okay. Okay. So. Let's see here. Haru and Tomuri. Um, Haru and Tomuri, you are struggling as this sand is pulling at you and the wind is pulling at you. And you make it through there, but um, um, but in the end of this, it has just exhausted you and each of you will take one level of exhaustion. Just as the storm feels like it will pull you from the sands and carry you away, it passes. The sand falls out of the air and settles to the ground. Sunlight once again batters the land with its illumination. However, everything looks different. The dunes and the hills of sand around you have been completely rearranged. In only a few minutes, the terrifying force of the giant's passage has reshaped the desert. and. Let's see, what wasn't protected from the storm? We had, so four of the camels have run off. Um, they survived, however, it was it was too great of a, a, in their pain and all that. They went off. I think you guys managed to protect all of the, all of the wagons are still there and can be dug out, but it's going to take some work to dig them out. And what is this arcana check for? Uh, let me see if the if the exhaustion would roll, but didn't. So just ignore it. Okay. Um. Okay. So as you dig yourselves out. It takes some effort and some work to get yourselves out. Um, this is basically going to take most of this travel time. So you're going to want to set up a camp nearby here as you take stock. Uh, let's see, you encouraged all of the drivers to get into the wagons as you batten the wagons down. So they are battered and tired and exhausted. So we're going to take a long rest. And I'm going to draw some X's here to show these camels are a little more. And one camel pull your mm -hmm. wagon? Oh, well, 
Oh, that was something. Yes, we, um, we can, although I think we should, it will be more slowly, um, but yes, we can do it with one camel each to pull the wagons, and we have four camels, so we can continue to go slowly. Is everybody okay? And looking around, it's like people are battered and exhausted, and the drivers are pushing to take a rest. It's like, because we're entering into the, the real heat of the day, the afternoon heat. But I think we should, I think we should move on and get out of the desert. Um, you know, out here, we're open to ambush again. I think we should keep moving. Anyone want to try uh, and persuade him otherwise? Uh, can I cast this kind of look around? Is there, is there still a wind going on in the desert? It has died away in the wake, and you can see the cloud moving off to the northeast. You can see the the, the cloud and the the sandstorm fall in its wake. <clears throat> um, um, like, so it uh, has all settled here. But uh, you had to cover. dig out. You had to dig out the the wagons um, out of there. So you've put in some work, and the drivers have put in some work, and they're tired, and they're pushing to rest. Go ahead. Uh, that's kind of remarks. Well, we have a couple of us who can drive, so the drivers can probably take a break with that. Um, um, mm, given okay. that, cast, yeah, uh, some of us don't look too good either. Yeah, uh, cast this kind of remarks. Uh, how, um, given that he was focused on protecting the drivers, um, like, are they just mostly exhausted or are they overall fine? <clears throat> exhausted, tired, weary, sore, but otherwise they're alive. Yeah. Cass is kind of both saying like, uh, uh, says, uh, given the state of the group, uh, especially given that everyone's kind of tired and, and some of our own parties has taken uh, a little level of exhaustion. Like he says that he's up for, for kind of staying out and keeping watch while everyone tries to kind of recover and kind of rest, uh, saying that like they are in a bonus spot, but they try to move around and force it. We can just invite, um, make us easy targets. So you're voting to camp here with a watch like you've um, been doing? Yeah, uh, can... Cast this make sense of the new like new terrain because of the sandstorm to see if there's a, 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 a ways to kind of um, yeah because he was going to offer just to find better ways to kind of move throughout the desert. Um, well, it's it's just different than it has been. It's neither harder nor easier. It's just shaped differently. Tomai, okay. give me a perception check. Okay. You do not see, looking out in the heat of the day with the shimmering, you see some shadows and stuff moving around amongst the shimmering heat that rises off of the sand, but none, nothing seems to resolve into any ambush parties. And you squint trying to look at it, and you don't, you don't think anything is ready to attack you. So what's the... So what's the consensus here? Do we stop? Can we move on? Uh, Cassis votes to kind of have everyone like like have the group take a short rest to kind of help recover, uh, uh, if anything. Uh, and he uh, and if we need and he'll he'll vote to kind of keep watch, keep an eye out for the group. Uh, if anything, okay. he will. Try to see if we can climb onto the top of the uh, the wagon uh, to kind of get a better vantage point. Is there anything around that you can kind of 
get a better vantage point to get a better lay of land? Um, sure. There's a particularly uh, large dune not far from you that you could climb up on. Uh, yeah, Cassius will try to kind of climb up on it, um, saying that he's going to go kind of keep an eye out to see if he spots anything off in the distance <coughs> that he can notice. That way we can kind of gauge how much time and the group can kind of uh, okay. mm, rest without worrying. Okay. So as you rest through the heat here, and then it actually passes quietly. Um, Castus, as you're looking around, you notice that the small creatures, the spiders and the scorpions and the, the mice and the fleas and, and the snakes and all, they all resume as though nothing happened. It's like a perfectly normal area to them um, that, uh, as they scuttle around uh, as the afternoon wears on. And it is quiet. As it wears on, it's quiet. The heat shimmers up. But it seems like everything that, that was nearby had to go through that sandstorm and has has is taking a break as well, as far as you can tell. Next morning, Talana has uh, golden skin again, but um, actually dark hair. Dark hair this time. Are we right? taking a short, a short rest or a long rest for this? Uh. Well, you can get, uh, so you can take short rests. You can count this as half of a long rest. Um, you can have a long rest between now and when you get to the toll booth. So you can count it as a long rest. We managed to not lose any wagons. It took a large amount of work. You lost some time digging them out, but you had people at each of the wagons uh, battening them down and marking their location so that they weren't lost. Um, and fortunately, there were some shovels in that room with the weapons shipment to help dig out. So it took hours to dig them out, but you didn't, none of them were lost under the sands. Uh, would Cassis have been able to kind of track the camels to see if it could find them and kind of get some back after the sandstorm? Give me a no, because they would have disappeared in the storm, and there are no tracks after the storm. The storm has cleared right. any tracks away. All right, good to know. All right. And one of our Twitch watchers hopes there are no sandworms in the area. It's like, well, this is only oh, a tier one adventure, so <laughs> we probably don't have sandworms. I could toss them in. No, it's adventure league. I can't toss them in. Okay. You put them out in the distance. It's part of the scene. Yeah, yeah. out in the distance, you know, a nice worm. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I guess as the group starts makes its way to the toll, um, uh, Cass kind of remarks again that, um, if Haru is uh, doesn't know Orcish, he'd be willing to uh, use the help action to help Haru negotiate by transit because he knows Orcish. Okay. All right. Keep right there. Speak Orcish. All right. So we'll now skip back ahead in time, as you come out of the desert and and are heading up into the mountains, and it's it's like your skin can feel the difference as it's a little bit moister and and it. It feels softer, but the but the hills are quite steep as the road comes up, and the road is coming up. And so, you guys wanted a chance to get a look. And I assume did you leave the wagons behind a little bit as you came to get a look at the toll gate? I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. So as you are coming up, okay. So the black road goes through a steep sided canyon. And you can see that the road is blocked. It's a crude stone wall with an iron gate in it. And you see uh, uh, quite a number of broad-shouldered, ill-featured, armored humanoids moving back and forth along the top of the wall. Some of them are moving and some of them are sort of looking over it. 
Um, with this defensive structure here, as you can see on the, the thing, the canyon walls are 40 feet high. It's, it's even, even the wall with the portcullis is 15 feet high. They own the road right here in the passage to the west. Um, oh, there's a faded, tattered banner. I have a banner. Uh, here we go. A faded, tattered banner hanging off of the rampart walls. Um, flying the, the leering skull of some loathsome tusk creature flying over the battlements. So, what do you want to do here? Azam is still muttering and fuming and, and absolutely outraged, but he's back with the, the wagons, and you guys are a little ways ahead. Uh, given that say? Haru re remarked the toenails where he want, he is going to open the wooden box to see if he can identify the weird thing that was in there uh, to see if they were, in fact, toenails. Um... I thought just, someone uh, did. Yeah, someone did it. Too. Yeah, someone did a nature check and did determine that they were toenails. Oh, I don't. That's not what I want. I wanted to see if these okay. guys speak Orcish. Let's see. Were they like really large toenails, like giant-like toenails? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If someone Maybe. wants to give me a an Arcana check. Well, let's all sort of <laughs> see what this might be used for. Yeah, okay. So Haru has no idea. The rest of you, <laughs> uh, you know, these are these. This is a potentially valuable ingredient for making potions of giant strength. You'd have to know what kind of giant they came off of and, and stuff like that. But there could be a value to them. By the smell, probably hill. Hmm. Uh, does Cassis recognize the flag or any signs to see, like, uh, make heads or tails up at the flag itself? Um, let's see. You can make a history check. Fourteen. This is. A symbol of where's his name? I know these. I know this. Of you've seen this around. Um, does it say what DC is for that? It it sort of snags at your memory. Um, it's at the tip of your tongue, but you aren't quite sure. But it has an association with a makes you think of a hill giant. Alana will actually cast the blessing of of the war god and make her armor a bit more white. Okay. So what are you guys gonna do? You're looking ahead at this, you're seeing this force up there on the, the hill in the canyon. Mm -hmm. My plan is to go up there and okay. see if I can exchange the toenails because you guys claim they may have some ar archaic value. I personally don't see it, but uh, that's what you guys have informed me. All right. I'm not coming with you. She so wants as... to take a good look at these goblins. <laughs> okay. Tamori may be interested. No contact. As, as you get nearer the wall, you can see that the sandstorm that was so costly to your group also did damage to this area. The banners are tattered, uh, poles have been knocked aside, some of the crudely applied armored plates on the ramparts have been torn away. Uh, you can see the dozen armored hobgoblins in position along the ramparts and uh, standing unmoving as, the car as you approach, not the caravan because you don't have the wagons with you. Um, <laughs> Off to the side, you see vultures feasting on something that died in the earlier sandstorm. And when you get about 60 feet away, a short, broad-shouldered, armored humanoid rises to the edge of the ramparts behind the crenellation. That's this guy. It pokes his head out and, and uh, shouts down. He's got vicious yellow eyes and a surly expression. 
You are entering bad fool's domain and must pay the toll. Only by you gold or blood will we open the gates. You speak common. This is wonderful. Um, I notice you say only gold or uh, blood, but what about uh, magical items with magical properties that can enhance your strength, help you rise above those around you? I have a few questions as well. What? Who is this bad fool, and why does he own this area? What is his claim to this land that he can erect tolbooths? And I will bad study fool. like the hobgoblins as much as I can, see if they, you know, have any weaknesses or anything, like what their armor is and all that. Okay, so you're going to give me a perception. No need role. to do that as, as the hobgoblin comes out and he's doing. Saying, a bad fool of the mighty as a giant, it rules over this area with an iron fist. 14 perception. You're saying he has no claim. The mighty claim what they can take. Oh. Uh, Cass would like to Long use pasta. his ability to identify with. So, with a perception of 14, um, those hobgoblins on top are looking, look really well armored. And while the ramparts aren't of the best construction, it looks, it looks defensible. It, it looks pretty solid enough and, and defensible. Um, and I missed the last thing someone said while I was looking up the perception check. Hunter sense how best to hurt it. One creature within 60 feet of you, whether they have any damage, immunities, resistance, or what they are. Are you doing this on the Hobgoblin Captain? Yes, on the leader. On the leader. You learn, immediately learn what the creature has any damage, immunities. Who does not have any damage, immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities. Yeah, it's basically yeah. like he tries to, he can use that to kind of figure out like what are an opponent's um, strengths and weaknesses, essentially. He has a great sword on his back and it looks like he knows how to use it. Um, add an additional perception check on that, Castus. Okay. Uh, one. He's Oh. He has he has a great sword on his back and he looks like he knows how to use it. And giant giants think they can take whatever land they set their feet on because they can and they stomp out anyone who says otherwise. All right, and I see is uh, you have not been stomped out yet. You're you're a sensible and understanding uh, gentleman. Uh, would would you be willing for us to uh, negotiate our fare for crossing through your total bridge? The fare is 15 gold pieces or two camels. Hey guys, we got four camels, right? We could, uh... You have four camels four and four wagons. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hear me out. Uh, our, now's yeah. not the time to think we can't get the I, camels away. We we can't. It would be really easy. <laughs> well, 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 while the group is talking, hush themselves. Shush is just kind of just. Well, as seeing as uh, we don't have a caravan and we're traveling on foot, uh, camels seems to be out of the uh, question. A little light on the camel. Uh, quick question: Since you're fortifying a hold, uh, what would you have any need for a camel? We eat them. They're good food. Little chewy. But they add strength. If you say so. Alright, uh, so if you're way up there, uh, how do we pay a toll? I come down to get it. Are you willing to pay the 15 gold to go through? So is this like a, a general fee per head group? Like how 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 do you price this? 
I, it's 15 gold for me to open the gate and let you through. If okay, all of you get through, it's just 15 gold for all of you. Joy, if, if I, I will have find to the open the three. gate again, if I have to open the gate again, it's another 15 gold. Okay, but say if I go find the next three caravans and we all rush through, then then it's basically a group discount. And he sort of squints down at you and snarls a little. Ah, uh, see, I see, might you get... change. <laughs> you you got to do better business, otherwise we'll take advantage of you. Uh, I look at the. Rest. Uh, I still don't like this. Give me a persuasion roll. No. Don't encourage them. <laughs> a five. Do you need help? Tomorrow's got Tomorrow's got proficiency in persuasion. He scowls down at you and says, "That's daft. You're too daft to survive out here." All right, I'll, I'll pull Paru to I, I'm says. I'm proficient. Har Haru's proficient persuasion, but um, we derailed from what I was going for. <laughs> I was uh, pretty yeah. You started to talk about something that, you know, magical. Yeah, the group didn't really pick up on it because everybody stuff. else. Yeah. I was like, well, oh, well. As we're all in this position, Tilana will do a little face step and just teleport <laughs> in place. Teleport mm. in place. And you all get three temp HP. Nice. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. How much temporary HP? I say we take him on. Well, okay. It's entirely unreasonable well, and a danger to everyone. Well, the more he well, looks at I'm, I'm a melee fighter. They look like they're 15 feet up. So, and, by, and they have cover from the crenellations. Uh, do you have any way of getting me up there? Otherwise, I'm not going to be useful. Oh, so this session we're paying them to open the door and then we storm them from behind. I uh, sure, why not? Yeah. Well, let's try this. Well, tomorrow just looks and goes. Well, wait a minute. Their battlements are damaged. I have an idea. What if we just try offer to repair a little bit of their battlements in exchange for them letting us through? They get their defenses. We get through. Win win. Would, would I mean, you like yes, not a win for try? everyone else building this boat? Would you like me to try telling them that? I mean, I'm quite the handyman. Yeah, I'd, I'd be willing to lend some time if we got a free passage. Mm. All right, like all right, I said, I'll... not a win for anybody else traveling this road. Right, yeah, right, yeah right. but Cass is kind of remarks saying, um, Yes, but we were hired to get our uh, colleagues in. Uh, are you willing to risk um, our employers and um, their goods along with that? Because uh, they pretty much outnumber us. Listen, uh, if if they were willing to let the Zins through just by simple fare and didn't take any of their supplies, I'm I'm sure they're more than willing to accommodate us. And if not, I've got a big old battle axe with the big one's uh, name on it. Har Har will step forward. Well, hold on. Let me. Well, I mean, last time I tried to do a persuasion check, you guys jumped on. That. Now here we are. Go, go, go for it. So I would like to try this one more time. Hopefully, I don't get interrupted this time, which means, of course, I'm going to roll natural one. That's so. What's it going to be? Um. Well, I have. We have a. Uh, we have an alternate trade. We noticed that you've not fared well in this uh, storm with your battlements, and it it must be a pretty large shame. You you wear this banner, and yet you have such a shoddy battlement. That must really sting. Now, what if I, what if we had someone uh, who knew how to make battlements of an exquisite quality, and they could repair this for you? And then you would have a battlement that would uh, make the heavens cry with joy, and surely your leader would be proud of this bridge that he that he had. Would you let us uh, pass if we uh, spent some time to help repair this for you? Give me persuasion. 
All right, I'm gonna use my uh, I'm gonna use my uh, inspiration because okay. I don't want to fail. Can okay. uh, Cassis use? That's a twenty-two from the paladin. And he he looks thoughtful. You have with you a mason of of such skill. Oh yes, it's like divine. How how long would it? Do you think it would take to repair this? I uh, I'll look at a, I'll look at him and be like, "What's your estimate, man?" I I'd, I'd have to get a good eye at it, but I'd say you know, at least an hour, maybe two. Cass uh, offers that he's mm, shares that he's proficient with Smith, so so he'd be willing to kind of help out. All right, probably half the time if I've got help. Um, half the time if he got help, what I tell these folks up on the battlements. And he looks kind of incredulous. What are you going to do in half an hour or an hour? You got some powerful magic? So if you're looking this over, I, um, give me... Something intelligence based or a Mason's tools skill check like with intelligence to, to kind of estimate what you actually think it would take. So do you want a straight intelligence from the two proficient with tools? Yeah, either a straight intelligence or one of the skills with intelligence, either, you know, history, you know, one of the intelligence based ones or um make a mason's tools check with uh intelligence as the basis for it okay i think Cassis will just do an investigation check to kind of okay. get a best idea and okay. just to make sure he succeeds uh i'll use my inspiration for this to roll with advantage okay ten so wow. with a ten you think Well, you think to really do a solid job, I mean, this stuff is pretty defensible as it is, to really make it look a lot more powerful, you figure it would take a couple of 10 days. Um, Cassidy's kind of whispers to Harold, was like, yeah, I don't think we can kind of do this in, in half an hour. Listen, <laughs> but listen, man, listen, hear me out. We tell them that. <laughs> they let us in. You see, you see where I'm going with this. We we are inside. Uh, it, you you got me. You got me. You're on my level. I, Cass I just kind of nods. Cast his nods and kind of goes, "All right, if we're gonna fight this, we gotta be quick and efficient with this." Yeah, we'll be inside. Well, maybe we'll take him by surprise. You and me, we got this. We're on the same page. Yeah, Cast is kind of as willing to say, "Like you know, like we worked good before." Um, I'd say we got enough history that I'll back you up on your play. Uh, oh. And we'll, and like Cassis will like just ready in action to follow mm -hmm. uh, Haru's lead, whether it's attacking mm -hmm. or doing something else. Yes. Uh, oof, just uh, quickly, I... but fine. <coughs> um, I will look at this man and I'll be like, listen, th my man here, he has powers from his gods and he is forged and forged and let me tell you the way he can fix this in like an hour is amazing um we'll need to go inside and basically just tinker around a bit but trust me when i say my man he's on the level you'll never have to worry about sandstorms again <laughs> sorry i'm not laughing in character no you're fine yeah, no, because you had, I mean, you, uh, oh, uh, he kind of nods and I think we can do something with that. Powerful mm -hmm. magic like that. Hmm. Uh, let me. He thinks about it. He says. Okay, and he motions to a couple of the other guys, and, and he, uh, let's see, kind of description of this, I 
probably don't need a description of that. Do I need a description of this? Uh. <clears throat> So he climbs, he's, he starts going down, you know, sort of disappears behind and appears behind the gates after a little bit. And he, he calls a few of his folks to come down with him. Um, and, and they come down and, and I actually, before one of them comes down, he's up near the top and, and you hear a, a grinding, squealing noise. They could do with some oil here. I mean, it's kind of hard in the desert to keep stuff working well. Um, and uh, you can hear the gate is slowly, you, you can hear the grinding noise, you can see the gate slowly rising to allow you passage. And so you guys can come through. <coughs> We're all gonna die. I mean, well, I'm not saying that in character, that's how I feel. <laughs> And there's stairs that go up here, it's, up to the top. So there's there there's ra a ramp that kind of goes up to the top, and you can see the backs of these guys who are still looking outward, you know, guarding towards the other way. There's one of them that's looking back, at, you know, that that is looking back down at you guys, but most of them are still facing forward, guarding the way. Is the entourage coming through too as well? Um, they can't the do anything at all. Um, my what? entourage should probably stay with the. They'll probably stay with the wagons because um they won't go okay. anywhere dangerous. <clears throat> okay. Uh, they they haven't turned around at all. Um, they haven't. Well, one of them turned over to look down at you, and the rest are still continuing to guard forward. And then there's the ones that are down here with you guys. I take here. another look at them. They seem they seem suspicious. Here, if you would be so kind as to lead us up to your battlements, I can I can start checking over your crenellations to to see how much I need to modify them. Okay. Um. Give me a persuasion check. Can, and can he and and um, give me a a that um. That was um. Lazy wind, wasn't it? Give me a perception. Uh, can he have advantage because I kind of helped him? I was like, lead the way. And I have a natural confidence. Yes. I'll give advantage on the persuasion. It's <laughs> <That's> better. <laughs> it is better. Um, actually, uh, Lazy Wind, give me insight. Because you were feeling something was off here. Give me insight. Oh, that's worse. Yeah, well, we're uh, okay, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? <laughs> he looks like up suspiciously we, at you. <laughs> so he looks suspiciously at you. It's like, you need to go up? Why do you need to go up? You have powerful magic. You can do it from down here. I, if I can't see what I'm fixing, then no, I don't, I don't think I can. The wall's right here in front of you. What else do you need to see? It's 15 feet high. You, you know, you can't miss it. Um, listen here. Okay. He, and I'll point out the emblem on his shield, is a divine, uh, man of building. And he needs to be as close to the sky and I'll point at the sky the clouds are to the divineness of his uh, god's realm as possible. Won't you please entreat him with this one thing so that he, we can fix this properly? The last thing I want to do is have a mistake done because uh, you didn't want him to be close to his god. Give me persuasion. <laughs> All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Prisma. There we are. Mm. Are you trying to climb the guard tower, or are you just hiding behind it? Yeah, but I'm, I'm hiding behind. Hiding it. behind it. Okay. All right. Well, they're being distracted. I, I like how the ones who wanted to pick a fight are starting to hide. 
<laughs> I just wanted hey. to note that for a second. Uh, but, uh, yeah, with that information, like, uh, uh, Cass just kind of one looks around to see if there's any potential weak spot in this, in this, uh, essentially fortress to see, uh, what is, like, to find a potential weak spot to either use to kind of help them get away uh, or okay. take out the group because it seems like we willingly jumped into this uh, okay. disadvantaged situation. Give me either perception or insight. What I tell you will depend on which of those you choose and how well you roll, of course. I'm going to go with perception on this. A nine. Wow. And I have a plus seven okay. perception too. Okay. So so the wall is there. It's large. It looks kind of cobbled together, but it's very large and that much rock is kind of solid. And yeah, there's some hollow parts inside somehow for the mechanism for the portcullis, but it looks solid is what you get from that roll. Um, can, can I ask a question? Yes. Is there is there any because it was damaged? Is there anywhere you could hit it from the bottom where it would come tumbling down, like a foundation error? If you had the ability to dig under it and to undermine it, and then if you had a catapult with large boulders and you aimed near the bottom, maybe. Um, uh, weapons in your hand? No. What if I had nine out of my ten torches? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's stone. It's not going to burn. No. <laughs> okay. Good thought. I, li I like your thinking. So, so out of character, as a group, what do you all want to do? Because we kind of put ourselves... Listen, listen. Oh, I say supplies to take. We, we could. If we could get them to close... And we could somehow get up top there. We could just start throwing them off. <laughs> but then they could go and kill our wagons. But hey, at least we're over here, right? I'm concerned that they didn't turn around at all. Mm. Yeah. Um, sure, sure, it's just going to be. Uh, or, sorry, have they closed the portcullis since we came through? They have not yet. Okay, so sure, just all right. Now, see, back to the earlier conversational point. Uh, any gestures at the open gateway? Uh, this is what I was talking about. Just, just anyone could become Russian through here right now and not have to pay your toll. You, you left the gate wide open. We have guards here, but the hobgoblin captain gestures up to uh, to one of the orcs who who kind of nods, and you hear the grinding noises, and the gate starts to come back down. Right, so okay. where's this where's this great magic you're doing? And the 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 three the captain and the other two that are around you are looking at you very expectantly. No, the the, the pretty boy's got a pretty good grasp on on how how the divine building works. I again I I need to see what I'm repairing. I I can't I can't just ask my god to you know renovate a whole wall. I got I got to see the damages. Okay, just you, and you can he gestures that you can go up the ramp. All right. Uh, uh, given that Cass is one of the Smiths that volunteered to help fortify, can he? Is there anything you could do either through um, investigation or any type of skill trick game you can decide, or he's repairing it, like to kind of, but convince them that uh, convince them that he's that he's making it stronger when in fact he's actually making it weaker. Uh, Castus, what is your background? Folk hero. His background, he's a he's a folk hero for the background. But I, I guess, like, given that he's proficient with Smith's tools and he has the headband of intellect to increase his intelligence, I guess he's just trying to kind of weaken the structure to help, like, because uh, I think it's pretty obvious that we're going to be in a fight at this point. Uh, so he's trying to do what he can to kind of tip the scales in their favor, even if it's just a little bit. Um, there isn't anything you could do in a short amount of time that could do that. Um, you could try deception to make them think you're doing it, but you wouldn't be able to weaken it substantially. In, in a short amount of time. I mean, this, it would take a week. 
I mean, okay. the gray ooze is an interesting idea. Do you happen to have some gray ooze with you? Oh man, I left my I left them in the caravan. <laughs> oh, no. oh darn! Oh, darn. <laughs> oh man. Okay, uh, we, so. All right. All right, so, so we're just stalling for time now. Like, as a group out of character, what do you guys want to do? Uh, do you want to have a plan or you just want to go, uh, just start swinging? Uh, just just, just let, let, let Shersha go up and we'll we'll start planning it out. Yeah, because I'm like, if you're and up what here... I want to do is sneak up and um, attack these, the, the captain. Okay. Um, so, Sersha, where... as you... Go ahead. I was going to ask, uh, where is the thing that goes up 15 feet to get up top? It's going to be a, a... That's a good question. Let's say... I was thinking it was a ramp along there, but let's say it's a ramp along here. Or a, a ramp or a stairway along there. Up there. And at the top, one of the other... Um, one of the, the other ones is... Here, let me see if I can grab this and move it to the map layer so I don't accidentally move it around. Okay. It's standing kind of at the top and, and he's kind of in your way, which as you come up, he'll back he'll continue to sort of back up, but but he's still sort of standing between you and and the very top. And he doesn't let you get up actually on the top. Is so let's go into initiative just to coordinate who's doing what since I'm sensing that we've got combat coming. I, I want to surprise them. That's why I hit. Yeah. Um, does, but I have let's a question. Go, does, go ahead. Does anyone have Thorn Whip? Definitely not. Oh. Uh. Kim, do you need to yeah, reset six, the yeah, initiative more. so we can roll? Oh, is this still last times? I thought I did that. Oh, here, I'll clear it again. We'll do it again. Okay. Uh, how goes in Captain? Captain? Oops, that's not him. And he was. Two, three, four, five. I'm missing two. I am missing Lazy Wind. And who else am I missing? Oh, Tamori, there we go. Lazy Wind, do you want to get your initiative in here? Okay. Lazy Wind, we shall start with you. So, current situation. Um, you, Sersha. You know, um, refresh, refresh the turn order. I'm not first. Oh, okay. So the current situation is um, Sersha is about two thirds of the way up to the top with uh, this one uh, hobgoblin with his, you know, facing Sersha with his back to his peers up above. Um, this guy is and the hobgoblin captain are watching them. This guy is watching the party that's here that he can see. Um, and so then we shall start with Sersha. They're not paying any attention whatsoever to Talarna or Lazy Wind. Okay, Sersha, what are you doing as you're going up here? Tell me what you're doing. Uh, Sersha's just going to remark at the hobgoblin that's in front. I was like, er... Are you wanting to hold my tool, son? It's it's still a bit bright in the day for you to hold the torch for me, though. Uh, if you could you kindly just move. You can see it from here. You can see it from here. See, there's a wall. It's a wall. And he sort of glares at you. If you uh, want him to I move, try intimidation or persuasion to get him to move, if you want him to move away. Or you can do something else. Yeah, you know, he's not that great at either of those. Um, <laughs> he's he's going to like, you know, he's 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 a dwarf. He's about mid height. He's he's going to reach up, you know, about about, you know, the hobgoblin's midsection, like, you know, just blow the, the ribs or something. It look like he's trying to push him aside. And uh, if we could just inflict wounds and try to, you know, shove him over. Okay. 
He's just, all right, I've, I've had enough of all this, you know, heel dragon. Let's go. Okay. A 13. I don't think that's going to do it. That's not going to hit. Uh, that's not going to manage. A, so you reach up and you're pushing along his, his shoulder and all that, but, but you kind of are waving past him. And as he kind of leans out of the way and it looks like he's going to, uh, he's going to start to get hostile, he thinks. But he hasn't thought very much of it because you haven't walked, you haven't reached for a weapon yet. So he doesn't recognize that that was an attack. Anything else? Uh, yeah, he's he's just gonna turn. He's like, Eric, you know what? Your wall looks fine. Uh, let let's just do this, and that'll be the end of my turn. As as he's Haru. just looking directly at Haru. Okay. Um, Haru. Do you guys want to start combat, or do you guys want to try to delay it one more round? I need to know. That 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 was my intent. Intent I just missed. Oh, okay. We're gonna start combat. All right. I'm gonna be like, oh man, uh, look at the way he does this. I'm just gonna kind of uh, reach back as if I'm stretching and uh, grab my long sword and you know, just kind of uh, stretching. Give him uh, you know, reaching up. Okay. And I'm like, oh man, I got this really bad kink in my back. Oh, and I'll, I'll look like I get really mad as I start to rage a little. Ah! <laughs> you know, just get a little mad when you just can't stretch correctly, and I will, uh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna swing with my <laughs> long sword one handed at this that guy. That is a mess. I haven't These are fully armored yet. Guys. I haven't. Oh, that's right. Okay, right. 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 You're right. Right. I was looking. Um, I saw something move. I saw something move, and I was looking at the inflict wounds. Go ahead. I was gonna ask for advantage, but I don't feel like I deserve it. One hand. Here we go. <laughs> hey, look! I I strike this wall. I'm not, I'm gonna be like, oh yes, right here. This is exactly uh <laughs> the, the kind of stuff that's bad. Which Tell is... you what. Give me a deception. All right. Should I, should I roll disadvantage? Because it'd be fun. No, uh, no, just roll deception. Mm, okay, we're gonna let that. We're gonna let that six. <laughs> we're gonna let that six stand. Okay. Anything else with a movement or a bonus action? Oh, you raged for your bonus action, so. Yeah, I'm gonna step here. Do you want me behind you, Sure Shaw? Hey, if you want to be, be wherever you want. Uh, I feel like maybe it might be better if I if I'm not. There's no flanking in adventure. I know, League. I know. There's no flanking. I was just thinking about if you go down and want people to uh come in, but I was thinking maybe someone else might have a better time if they go up and I hold off these bottom people or not. So I'll just stay in here. Okay. Cast us. Okay, cast is gonna point and say um um just gonna say hey um you know what given that we're just trying to do the fight now like uh can you mark the leader for me because i don't know which is the leader now given that all the tokens have moved that one okay yeah he has a slightly different he has a silver background instead of a, a tan background but that's pretty subtle can Cassis tell if if these if this gang of uh, of orc raiders um, is wise of what exactly it is that we're trying to do? Give me insight or perception. Uh, they don't I rolled insight the moment you said. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, they don't appear to be. They they don't appear to be on alert. They are not moving to draw weapons yet. Okay, uh, then... Because um, this is all kind of happening. Like, oh. I mean, this is six seconds, so it's all kind of happening almost simultaneously. So, go ahead. Cass is going to essentially pretend to be working on the wall to help kind of re repair that, that wall with this, uh, like, uh, like just studying to see, like, what it sounds like. He's essentially going to ready in action with okay, his crossbow. Give me deception. Uh, 
Okay, deception. I got a minus one. So let's see how good this will go. 13. Okay. I will give you... Um, okay, yeah, we are running a little long. Uh, I will give you advantage on your crossbow attack when it, when it comes. What's the trigger? Uh, the, the cast... Uh, the trigger is the moment they know uh, fighting has started and they go up and start attacking, he will try to attack that leader. And I guess... Okay. Bonus action, he would mark it with his mm -hmm. um uh with his uh slayer's prey. Okay. And then okay. just turn there. All right. Lazy wind. They do not uh, they have lost track of you, so you do have stealth and advantage. Uh what's the is this the go the captain? Yes it is. I'll pop out and psychic blades him. It doesn't make a sound, so it doesn't look like I'm doing anything. Okay. Seventeen to hit for um, ten damage. That will that will hit? Then I hide again. Okay. Okay. Or not. So the ca All right. So the captain with a sudden um bolt uh, let's see psychic blade, psychic psychic damage. So that isn't anything visible. Um he is startled and surprised and gives kind of a, a gasp and these um these Three turn to look at him in surprise. Talarna. So they're no longer, they're no longer like surprised, I guess. And I'll. Talarna will whisper something about the blessing of our show. Mm -hmm. Breathe in, and then uh, our show is the god of dragons for elves. Mm hmm. And exhale on the captain and his friend in the back. Okay. This is a deck save. Yep. Captain and, and that is his friend in the I'll back. I'm going to say fire damage. Okay. So they both fail. So they take 14 fire damage. Okay. Wait, did I do you or him? I did him. I did him. Okay, so he's bloodied. And he takes... And he's dead. He is sin incinerated. All right. So the captain has, uh, has you know, grabbed his head. He made a gasp of sudden pain and sort of lurches forward a little bit and as fire washes over them and, and singes and burns him as he's stumbling. And it catches this guy off guard and he just... just Burned up. Okay. Object detection. I will draw my glowing sword, which you know, doing daytime okay. doesn't help much. But at least okay. I have a sword now. Okay, Tamori. This guy is going to be a little gutsy, but he may work. Maybe. Okay. Uh, let me just check the measurement. He's going to try to cast. He's going to cast a spell called. Well. He's going to walk behind a little bit, stretch his stretch, and pretend like he's stretching, but ends up pointing his finger over that direction and cast sleep. Yeah. Let me pull it up. Yeah, it's level. Okay, well... Sleep. Okay, and you, you cast it. What's the area that you're casting it? Nine a, feet. 20... Is all of them? Yeah. With, yeah. Just the, the ones that like on the rampart. Just point high enough that it just gets all the hobgoblins on the ramparts. Okay. That one falls asleep. Can you mark which one that would be? Uh, I just, it has, it's this one. He has a sleep indicator in oh. the corner now. Yep. Okay, then. Um... Oh. Uh, well, let's see here. Oh, Twitch. 
friends. Well, thank you for bringing your D&D friends to say hi, Aladark. And thank you for the follow, Dark Ryan. Welcome. Right. And, oh. and yes, there's an actual Karis face. d and I show my face. I know, Minecraft, right. I don't. But. Okay, so back uh, to here. Anything else to Mori? Uh, he's going to try to get as far away, and that will be his turn. Okay. Sersha. Uh, yeah, what are you doing? The guy in front of you has just fallen asleep and is lying down on the rampart. He is difficult terrain to walk across. He sounds like he's having a bad day. <laughs> uh, he's about to have a little bit more of a bad day. Uh, I'm going to set this to auto crit just in case we hit. As he's going to come down with his battle axe. You're going to hit the sleeping guy? Okay. Yeah, and I don't remember... Because that would be meta, that's fine. Um, yes, it's, I'm it's going an auto crit. To, yeah, I'm going to bonus action apply a searing smite, so... Okay. Just for... There's that whole blurb. Does a 17 hit a sleeping hobgoblin? Uh, yes, it... Uh... Oh, please say yes. I'm going to cry. Uh, yeah, it is It is so close and he's sleeping. It's not like he can move out of the way. So, yes. Okay, so there's the extra crit fire damage. So a grand total of... What is that? 8, 6, 2... Uh, 23 damage. And you just slice his head off. Okay, so he does die. Fantastic. He is now a dead sleeping hobgoblin. Okay, I will step up on his body. Uh, does the next hobgoblin look ready to tangle? Uh, he does not. He's still facing the other direction. And actually, give me a perception check. Watch me fail it again. Yeah, eight. Even with an eight, you can see a couple tufts of straw sticking out of the side of his armor. Okay, uh, he's and he's gonna squint, just looking down the line. Do do any of them look like their weapons drawn, ready to fight him? None of them have weapons drawn, ready to fight. You know what? Heck, uh, he's gonna just action surge and and swing his axe at the back of the knees of the one standing in front of him. Okay, give him the attack. Okay. And a, um, a pile of straw, uh, and a pile of straw crumples to the ground, and the the um, armor clatters off of it. Fantastic! He just whizzes on. Oi! These are fakes. What's the big deal? <laughs> okay, Haru. So, uh, I think all pretense is gone, sir. I'm really sorry about this, but I'm going to uh, swing again with my longsword. This time, just instead of like casually trying to make it look like an action, I'm just going first neck. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 is a miss, I see. <laughs> and 14 is a miss, you see. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm raging. Should have gone reckless. <laughs> I don't have reckless. Oh, okay. Ah, and and a turn. Cast us. Um, before I go into my turn, was my uh, ready to action triggered at any point? No, they never did. They never did pull that. They haven't pulled their weapons. Uh, given that of how kind of things have progressed, like uh, cast is just like it's like all right. We're, we're fighting the heck with this. He just takes out his crossbow and he's again, he's going to um, uh, do uh, just attack the um, the he's going to he's going to attack the orc leader with his crossbow. Okay. And he's going and if he hits, he's going to use the favorite foe uh, trade again. Okay. So with his uh, with his uh, Monster Slur and stuff, he's going to roll full if they get to deal extra damage. Try to end the fight. 
And this is against the captain, right? Yes, this is against the, the captain. She's going to be doing okay. his heavy crossbow using favorite foe mm -hmm. and slayers. Yep, yep. Give me the attack. That 15. is a miss. Okay. Um, Captain, I guess he'll try to kind of back up to get some distance, and he's going to try to provide cover fire for Haru and Tamara. And, okay. And this Actually, you were readied, and I gave you advantage on your readied one. So go ahead and roll again. We'll just say that this is your readied. 26. Okay, that will do it. And this is 15. Okay, yes, 15. so that goes through the side of his neck and takes him down. Yeah, he'll end his turn just trying to give more cover fire. Okay, lazy wind. Let's pop out. Let's shoot this one. Okay. Uh, yeah. That crossbow then hide. goes right through the chest and out the back, and we are out of initiative. Hmm. So, Less than expected. it goes quiet suddenly. Like and you can hear the heavy breathing of, of from your um, exercise, you know, as you're breathing and you look around at each other and... <laughs> what if I adore Jerk Owl? And everything is quiet. What do you do? Oh, justice has been served. <coughs> and she put her sword away. No, let's dismantle this as best we can so nobody yeah. uses it again. Shirsh is going to uh, spend his time kicking the fake hobgoblins off the top of the ramparts. Okay. And uh, so we'll have bits of, of armor and. Uh, oops, wrong thing. Let me grab these guys. I even ha I had them on the map layer <laughs> to remind me which ones were real and which ones weren't. <clears throat> okay, so you kick them off. Uh, what else? You so while you're up there, you see the mechanism for the portcullis to raise it up, and it is a relatively simple thing with your skills to see how to jam it to make it inoperable, so that you could raise it up and and make it stay in the 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 so the hobgoblins are are fakes made uh so when you look at the armor the armor is uh battered and sand um sand scoured and um has uh, you know bits of flesh and and blood and stuff on it so it looks like that that the hobgoblins that used to wear this armor uh, very recently died, probably in that sandstorm, and they stuffed straw in and propped them up to try and make them look like it was it was um, staffed. Uh, let's see, jams the portcullis open. What else is going on here? What a waste. <laughs> uh, sure, she's just gonna shut down like. All right, uh, I guess go give word to uh, Azam that we can go ahead and move on through. Uh, I guess okay. rummage through the goblins that aren't straw dummies. Okay. Uh, so the hobgoblin captain actually has some really nice bracers on. And the kind that uh, that you would wear... Uh, with a bow. And looking through this, you've got, uh, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, da, 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 da. Amongst their pockets, you find a bunch of small coins from the, from their prior revenue. There is, I mean, it, there's gold here from their prior tax revenue. You see an airy that has no birds in it but has scribes tools um you know like something you would use for message birds 
And you can see the ashes of some previous messages in a small brazier in the room. Um, there is a bloodstained suit of ring mail with a, a, the fist and sword emblem of the Order of the Conflict. And there is a, the, the captain guy also did have a pretty decent carved short bow. Okay. So you guys gather that all up and, and, you know, sort of tidy the place and move the bodies aside and, and clean the place up and send someone back to, um, to fetch the caravan. And you actually find, you can see some traces off in the distance where it looks like some bugbears are doing stuff, but they don't actually approach you and it doesn't look like, you know, that you don't see anything happening there. You're on kind of high alert looking for this, but as, you, as you're moving into the mountains and the forest lands and continuing on the road, uh, through the foothills of Grey Peaks. I mean, you, you camp one last night before you're going to reach Parnass the next day. And you've, looking around, you've got the four wagons. You've got all four drivers. You only have four camels, but, you know, hey, you're doing pretty well. And, and it looks like you're going to make it through just fine. So around... The night passes quietly, and you head into this town of Parnass. Oh, I don't have a mood sheet for the town of Parnast. Well, let me go back to the start page. You are coming up to Parnast. It's a, a very um, small town, and only a few townspeople come out to greet your ragged caravan. But one of them is a reasonably well-dressed elven half elven cleric who comes up and introduces um introduces herself as as i'm chandra and we're, we're so grateful that you braved the black road to bring the statue of our goddess to us you do have it there don't you i third wagon back oh excellent and you know, she's she goes and is looking eagerly for it and opening it and some of the others are coming out and, and they're looking, you know, kind of looking at, you know, is, is your shipment intact? Are, is it all okay? And uh, they are getting more and more um, energized as they realize that even though you're battered, you made it through intact. And Chandra gives a big sigh of, of relief, and it's like, you know, you know, please take your payment with our gratitude. And and she just her face just blooms with, with happiness. You know, we shall have the the blessing of our goddess and just bring her over here to the, the temple. And she passes over a small velvet bag of coins to you. And and let you get let us draw baths for you. We can we can have you stay for a meal and offer you a safe place to stay for the night, though, even though um, lodgings can be difficult to find. And as you look around, you notice that the other people are staring at this cleric in astonishment. And one of the citizens leans over next to him and he says, she hasn't said that much in years. It's just our duty we did. And Azam looks over your group with a shrewd glance and says, You did modestly well out there. And gives you a wry lopsided smile and smooths down his mustache. I'd travel with you again. You've got a friend on the black road. I'll stay here a while till we have enough goods for a new caravan, but it'd be nice if you stay get the sand out of everything here too. But you watch yourselves here. Between everything we've seen and heard, I think you're going to have larger problems soon. And that brings tonight's adventure to a conclusion. I will say good night to the Twitch peeps. Thank you so much for watching. 
and hang on to the other folks here. I shall, uh, we shall work on our Adventure League logs here momentarily. So, uh, thank you. I have to find OBS. Where did I, here's where I put OBS. So, bye, peeps, until next time.